my name is Eric Silverberg. I am the CEO and lead developer of Scruff. We're one of the largest gay dating apps on iOS and Android, and we're based here in New York City. And tonight, I am going to speak with you all about the past, present, and future of mobile advertising and why I think React Native has a big part to play. So let's start with what I would argue is the classic problem, the classic technical problem with mobile ads, content aside. And I think we can boil it down to one word, and that is the UI web view, okay? That is this ad unit right here, you all probably recognize. You've seen this on the bottom of uh, many mobile ads, probably powered by MoPub or AdMob. Um, uh, it might take a little bit of time to render. Um, you know, I think when we are evaluating, or I would submit to you all that when we are evaluating mobile ad units, we should do so on these four uh, dimensions. So to start, layout consistency. And what do I mean by that? How uh, consistent is the ad unit on different device types and different orientations? Uh, having done this now for many years, the UI web view is extremely inconsistent. Frequently, it will be anchored to the left or have banding on either side or be cut off because it thinks it has more vertical space than it actually does. Uh, next, layout customization. This is the ability to render arbitrary pixels. The, the great thing about UI WebView is that it is extremely customizable. It's essentially a blank slate, uh, a blank canvas. The performance is pretty terrible, typically because you have to download both the logic, being the HTML and JavaScript, and you have to download the assets, which are the images. Uh, not to mention that, uh, at least historically on iOS, Apple has uh, the, the UI web view has not been a um, particularly performant uh, component. Uh, and then lastly, I think this, is, this actually is a, an important dimension to consider. How many developers out there know how to write this kind of code? So because the UI web view is based on HTML, JavaScript, there are quite a few people, of course, who know how to do that but it's so idiosyncratic on mobile that I would say it's somewhere in the middle uh, in terms of how easily we can find folks to, to do this kind of engineering work. So what's the current state of the art in mobile advertising? Well, it's called, don't get confused here, it's called, quote, native advertising, all right? And what does this actually look like? So here is a little video uh, of interaction in the CNN app. You can see uh, two news articles, and then uh, nestled right underneath, you can see something that looks like a news article, but is in fact a native ad with a hero image and a headline. And it'll, if you tap on it, it'll take you to a, uh, uh, a mobile landing page for a credit card. So what is the, uh, what is the, the, the essential problem with native advertising as it's been defined today. Well, essentially, the layouts are hardwired. You have to use tools like Interface Builder for uh, iOS, or um, you can use XML-based layout descriptions on Android. And essentially, if you want to change this layout, if you want to update this layout, Maybe you're adding another image or recentering your, your headline. You have to create a new binary update. So those same four dimensions, um, I would argue one of the biggest benefits is the layout consistency. Because you're laying out these ad units in code, essentially, you know it's going to render consistently at different screen sizes, but you have very little ability to customize. Um, the performance is going to be quite high because you don't need to actually download any of the uh, application logic. Um, but I would, uh, finally, I would argue the number of developers who can actually write this code for you is, uh, is low simply because it's typically going to be written in Swift, Objective-C, or Java Android. Uh, 
uh, and there are relatively fewer uh, of those engineers. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about the future. Uh, let's talk about the future. React Native for in-app mobile advertising, and I'm going to jump into a demo of what this actually means. So uh, here is. Here is the Scruff application running in a simulator, and you can see we launched into a drag queen Christmas. This was a full screen interstitial for a, an ad partner uh, earlier this year, and you saw it had a nice amount of animation, uh, and in fact, it is a uh, fairly complex layout. There are at least half a dozen separate uh, image assets that are all positioned here. And if we, are, if we were to rotate the device to a uh, landscape, we can see the ad still renders in a very uh, reasonable and attractive way. Also, different device sizes. The images are just nicely flowing on top of each other, again, in a landscape, and of course, on Android. And we're getting all of this power thanks to Flexbox, which is something that I'm sure most of you in the audience here, since this is a React meetup, you're all very familiar with. And evaluating uh, React Native for in-app advertising across these same dimensions, we have high, high scores essentially almost across the board. You're going to get consistent layout thanks to Flexbox, complete customizability because it's React, you're using essentially JSX uh, and JavaScript. The performance is, I, I have it down here as a medium, you, you still are going to have to download the, uh, the bundle, essentially that application logic. Once downloaded, however, it will be um, uh, quite performant because it will all be local on the device. And as evidenced by all of you here in the audience, there are quite a few uh, people out there who can actually produce this kind of code. So I want to talk a little bit about our workflow and give you all some tips in case you are interested in building a similar kind of solution yourselves. So what we had to do uh, to get this workflow working was actually fork uh, React Native. And you can, we, we took that fork and we passed that in to uh, the React Native init script. Uh, essentially, every single new mobile ad that we build, it's like a new React Native app. And rather than take Facebook's defaults, we have customized this to include our own defaults. For example, that big button that you saw on the bottom, we built, we built a, a component so that when you pass this, um, this script in, it's already there, ready to go. Uh, once we have completed developing the React Native ad unit uh, in the simulator, we will then package it up using this magic incantation that you can Google for. And that will create a bundle file for us, which we then uh, compress into a zip file, which gets uploaded to our proprietary uh, in-app alerting system. And then our mobile clients will uh, connect to our servers, find out about any new alerts. Not all of our alerts are React Native enabled. So they'll find out about alerts, and then any React Native enabled alerts uh, will require the client to go fetch that asset, download it locally uh, to, to disk, and then render it once the download has completed. Okay, there are three gotchas. This took us, this took me many weeks to kind of work through, so I'm giving you uh, an accelerated uh, introduction here. The first gotcha has to do with versioning, okay? You have to make sure that the host application, in this case Scruff, has the same React Native version as the React Native ad unit that you have built separately. So we have pinned the version of React Native that we use in Scruff and in these uh, mobile ad units to 0443. If we were to ever run React Native upgrade in the ad unit code, which we did once, uh, it will crash. It will crash because you're essentially sending a newer version of React Native down to a, client, a host application that doesn't know how to interpret that. We actually, to ensure this never happens, in our uh, proprietary API, 
We also include the version of React Native that compiled this mobile ad unit. So if the client sees a mismatch, he won't even try and render it. This gets to the next gotcha, which has to do with exceptions, okay? Typically in a React Native, you know, a pure React Native app, if there is an unhandled JavaScript exception, you're gonna crash. There's nothing, it can, nothing you can do uh, and it'll take the whole app down. In our case, we have a full, fully functional uh, native application running underneath, if you will. And if there's a problem rendering the React Native ad unit, we don't want to crash the app. We'd rather just hide the ad unit and call it a day. And uh, you can do this using uh, these uh, macros that uh, are part of React Native on iOS. Uh, and in this case, um, essentially what's happening here is in the face of a, an assertion or fatal error, we capture that, we send a notification um, using NS notification on iOS um, and using an event bus on Android. And if there is an actively uh, drawn React Native uh, view controller or activity, we're just gonna close it. Uh, and this is the gobbledygook on Android that accomplishes the same thing. Um, okay, the, the last gotcha, and this isn't really a gotcha so much as an architectural decision that you all would have to make. What does the native communication look like? And uh, we elected in this case to make the native communication layer, that bridging layer, extremely simple, all right? We only have four, um, uh, functions that are essentially being exposed. Uh, this really, I think, sped up the development time, but it also let us seamlessly integrate React Native into an existing alerting system because, as I said, not all of our alerts are React Native enabled. Um, so my final parting thought to you all uh, before I open it up to questions, um, I actually think that there is a, an opportunity here. Um, so the mobile ad companies, the, the um, uh, providers like uh, AdMob or Mopub or Smato have for the last, you know, eight, nine years been extremely focused on uh, creating demand. They've been focused on things like exchanges and, you know, DSPs and the process of shuttling bids kind of in that like dark ether behind the scenes. But the actual user experience of advertising essentially remains stuck in something that was defined in like 2008 or nine, I think when AdMob started even before um, they were acquired by Google. And the, the ad units, those, those bottom banner ad units are pretty basic and pretty terrible. And I actually would argue that's one of the reasons why you see Facebook uh, capturing so much of the mobile ad uh, spend and mobile ad growth. Because, I mean, say what you will about data and targeting, the actual experience as a user of seeing and clicking Facebook feed ads is much better. Um, and so I think there is, number one, an opportunity to improve on the UI and UX of those banner ads. Uh, I think we are, as React Native, um, if you believe, I think as I do, as React Native grows in popularity, there's going to be an opportunity for a pure React Native, a React Native Native ads company to uh, produce a, an SDK for app publishers uh, like myself. And, uh, and there's actually been a big downturn in the mobile ad business when it comes to deals and investments, which as we all know is a great time to start a company because it likely means these big guys are getting complacent and um, taking their eye off the ball. Uh, and um, having uh, been publishing uh, Scruff now for almost eight years, uh, I can tell you that none of the big um, ads companies have quite gotten it right yet. So, um, yep, that's all I got. We're Scruff. Um, we're hiring engineers. So um, if anything I've said is of interest to you, please find me after the talk. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, my question is, um, when it comes to ads, do you look at the reporting side of 
ads, that? Oh, that's a really good, good question. I forgot to, to mention that. Okay, so the ads that you saw for, uh, that, that are integrated in Scruff, um, those are direct, so directly sold ads. So people reach out to us and just want to run, uh, they want to run essentially um, uh, CPM-based campaigns. And uh, th these are not programmatic campaigns, okay? So these advertisers are um, not that sophisticated in their reporting requirements. And what we did was we actually uh, integrated a, just a simple little script so that uh, when the React Native ad unit loads, it just makes a get request to Bitly. And we just generate a new Bitly for each one of these. And that's all you need, right? M m yeah, you just, that's all you need to track it. And most of our advertisers are direct response advertisers. So they're looking at how much sales they're, they're getting through Scruff anyway. So um, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. Do you have any differences in deploying from uh, React Native to Android versus um, an Apple uh, store um, deployment? Do you see that the one is harder than the other? And what are the differences and the challenges that you have there? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there, it was surprisingly easy. So when it, comes to, um, when it comes to deploying, we do have to build the bundles differently. It's a different command that you run. Um, so you are, you're uploading different, um, different packages, but um, the actual layouts are pretty consistent um, between the two platforms. Now, I will tell you, as your appetite for customization increases and you want to do things like embed a video or embed like a YouTube uh, into one of these uh, ad units, that's where the differences and the complexity uh, really starts to seep through. And you have to, like if you're doing video in React Native, you're going to have to embed um, uh, custom uh, third-party native modules and that happens in different ways and I think we actually submitted a couple of like pull requests and fixes to the Android video project um, uh, so yeah but for the basics it's pretty pretty straightforward okay, thanks so much